not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. From Zechariah chapter 4, with those words I welcome you on this Sunday of Pentecost. Pentecost, literally 50 days, 50 days after Easter, we conclude the season of Easter today and begin a new chapter in the story of our faith. Pentecost is about the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes among us, as we hear in Acts chapter 2, also in a different way, described in the Gospel reading today. Not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit work? The Holy Spirit is not only active in miraculous ways, but works oftentimes in much more mundane ways. The fact that any of us are here, the fact that any of us believe even though we might perceive it as such, really, the fact that any of us believe is because of the power of the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. God calls to us, and the Spirit is active to create in us that faith that God desires to find in us. With those, that word from a Zechariah, I welcome you on this Sunday. I see many people wearing red, and that's great. It's a, red is a symbol for this Sunday because of the reading from Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples of Jesus, and it looks as though it is a tongue of fire on the top of each head. If you're not wearing red, however, we'll let you stay. <laughs> really, it doesn't matter one way or the other, but uh, glad to have you here regardless. Some announcements I want to share before we continue. First of all, this is the last Sunday of the year that uh, the choir will be singing, or the last Sunday during the school year, of course, now that we're at the end of that, last Sunday of this season that the choir will be singing. So many thanks to all choir members for your gifts of music throughout the year, and Diane especially for conducting. It has been a wonderful year. We have made some very beautiful music together. So we look forward to the last Sunday for this season uh, today, picking up in the fall. And during the summer, we'll have various other types of special music offered by people who have been involved in the choir and, and what else. We're also thankful for the handbells and uh, their participation today. The funeral service for Dean Boyer was held here at the church on Thursday, so blessed be his memory. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, so the church office will be closed. We will have in town here the traditional Memorial Day parade, and I believe that all starts at 10 o'clock, but I could be wrong. And uh, we remember... In a different way, we remember those who have gave, given their lives for the freedom that we enjoy today. I also want to announce that uh, there is an announcement on this on the bulletin board out by the elevator, but uh, if anyone knows anyone who could benefit from this, uh, the details are on the sheet that you can see on the bulletin board, but uh, there are free eye exams in Thornville, Somerset, also in Crooksville, scheduled for different times in the month of June. So June 14th will be in Thornville here, so if you know of anybody who could benefit from that, uh, please take a look at that. I believe those are all of the announcements that I have to share with you. So on this Pentecost Sunday, I invite you to stand as you are able as we pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for your work in the past, calling and gathering your people by the power of your Spirit. As we gather this Sunday, we know that we stand in a long line of your people who have heard your call and by the power of your Spirit have declared Jesus to be Lord. We pray that you continue to empower us and your whole church in this world in all times of change and challenge. We pray that your spirit would bring new life to a creation that needs it. We pray that your breath would come over us, into us, and give us new life as well and sustain us all to the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Lord, our Lord. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. The good news in which we share is that Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing the Pentecost hymn number 161.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set Let us pray. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as you sent upon the disciples the promised gift of the Holy Spirit, look upon your church and open our hearts to the power of the Spirit. Kindle in us the fire of your love and strengthen our lives for service in your kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Good morning. Just four days ago, Becky and I spent several hours in the Rome, Italy airport, and we heard a cacophony of voices, sounds, languages, most of them undecipherable to us, and I think we can relate just a little bit to the people in this first lesson. A reading from the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. God speaks to people from all nations. Empowered disciples mediate the message. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, they're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. God. Psalm 104 will be chanted alternately by the cantor and the congregation. goes forth to his work and to his labor until the Small. There moves 
The second lesson is a reading from the 12th chapter of Paul's first letter to the early church in Corinth. God, the Holy Spirit, gives us a variety of gifts. Above all, the Holy Spirit empowers us to declare Jesus is Lord. It is written, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given, through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom. And to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by that same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are, were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. 
Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so am I sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On the list of things that we take for granted on this earth, which is a very long list, at least if you're myself, breathing ranks toward the top of the list. There are a lot of things that human beings need to survive, but for sure, breathing is absolutely essential for life. But it's one of those things that it's funny that we don't recognize it until it's gone. I remember when I was in elementary school during summer break. It was the middle of the summer, I was at the local county fair, and as I got off the tilt-a-whirl ride, I slid on the metal steps, fell down, and got the wind knocked out of me. Sounds like no big deal, but the fact that I still remember it all these years later says that it's a significant thing. As a 10-year-old, it was quite the scary experience I could see. I was aware of the world around me, but I couldn't breathe, and I couldn't talk. I couldn't tell anyone what was wrong. When I finally caught my breath, I was so grateful for that air that filled my lungs. When I worked as a summer church camp counselor, one of the things we had to do during our staff training was a course on basic first aid and life-saving skills. And a big part of that was rescue breathing and CPR. And I'm sure that many people here have had to do the same thing. They taught us how to make sure someone's airway was open before we started breathing for someone else. Otherwise, the air would not get into their lungs the way it needed to. When the Bible talks about what we call the Holy Spirit, in both the Hebrew and Greek languages of the Old and New Testaments, it is the word for breath or air. Pneumatic refers to pressurized air power, and it comes from the Greek word pneuma, meaning wind, breath, or air. Every Sunday that Pentecost comes around every year, 50 days after Easter, we hear of gathered disciples, divided tongues as of fire, and people speaking in foreign languages. The disciples of Jesus are gathered, and they receive the Holy Spirit in a particular way. The Holy Spirit appears to them, and there are what appear to be tongues of fire above their heads, and the Spirit gives them the ability to witness to what Jesus has done. There are people there from all over the world, Jewish people who speak lots of different languages, and the Spirit empowers the witness of God's people. We have in the Gospel reading a somewhat different version of Pentecost. John tells of the Holy Spirit in a rather different way. Scholars of the Bible sometimes call these verses in John chapter 20 the Johannine Pentecost. In other words, John's version of the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is not 50 days after Easter. The scene described by John takes us back to Easter, the evening of Easter. And there are 10 of Jesus' disciples gathered. As we learn in the following episode, the disciple named Thomas is not there for whatever reason. Things are uncertain. This was a scary time. I would imagine just as scary as when I got the wind knocked out of me as a 10-year-old at the county fair. These 10 disciples of Jesus still lived in the wake of the horror of Good Friday. They feared for their lives, but they also feared for their future, even if they continued to live. How would they go on? How would their life have any meaning? The one on whom they staked their life was 
dead and gone. Their faith was shaken. The wind was knocked out of them. I discovered something interesting. This is why it's always important to look at Bible translations with a critical eye. In the English Standard Version of the Bible that you have in your bulletin, it says that Jesus breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. That's the translation choice they made, and a lot of choices get made when you translate something. But one part of speech can make a world of difference. A preposition, a small word, can modify how we look at something. There's a big difference between saying you are on a mountain and saying you are under a mountain. There's a big difference between saying you are by a building and you are in a building. And there's a big difference between saying Jesus breathed on the disciples and Jesus breathed into the disciples. And that's really what it says. It says Jesus breathed into them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Whenever you do rescue breathing, you have to be careful to make sure the airway is open. Otherwise, the breath goes into their stomach and not their lungs. Jesus needed to breathe into them, not simply on them. Only then will the Spirit do its work. Only then will they have life. John's version of Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit, gives us an image of rescue breathing. Jesus comes to give life to those who were dead. Jesus breathes the presence of God and resuscitates them. Jesus ascended into heaven, but it is the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, that continues for us in this era of the Christian church. The Holy Spirit, the breath of God, continues to accompany the people of God and keep us connected to Jesus in the one true faith. And when that happens, that's when true life begins. This isn't the first time that we hear of God breathing into someone It takes us all the way back to the book of Genesis, the beginning of the Bible. It talks about God forming a man of dust from the earth. God breathes into his nostrils, and he becomes a living being. When Jesus breathes into his disciples, he's continuing an old tradition. When we read the Bible, there are lots of things we can focus on. We can focus on God's wrath judgment. We can focus on God's commandments, expectations. We can focus on strange images and prophecies, and those things are there, no question about it. But we also have to balance that with the main message of God's purpose, which comes out on this Sunday, which is to breathe new life into his creation and his people. When Jesus does his rescue breathing here, it tells us something about the heart of God. We ourselves and all people, whether we know it or not, have had the wind knocked out of us. It's all a part of humanity's ancient rebellion. Perhaps we've been running the race of life, chasing futile things. Perhaps we've stumbled and fallen along the way. Perhaps we're looking for affirmation and meaning in all the wrong places. Jesus is there to fill our lungs. Jesus is there to give us not what we want or think we need, but what we really need, which is a new relationship with God through him. The Holy Spirit's main goal is to call, gather, and enlighten us and keep us connected to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Other spirits in this world will lead us elsewhere, but God's true breath, Spirit, gives us life with God through Jesus Christ. God's breath, God's Spirit was active in the beginning, and God's breath God's Spirit continues to come to us and into us and give us sinful human beings new breath to restore our faith so that we might always cling to our Lord Jesus Christ. And God's Spirit also changes us and gives us new purpose. John's version of the coming of the Holy Spirit is different than that Pentecost story in the book of Acts, but they're also very much the same. In the reading from Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit comes on Jesus' followers. But this isn't just some nice miracle or magic trick. It is for a purpose. The Spirit empowers those people to speak about the good news of Jesus to those who were there. The Holy Spirit is at work. 
when the word of God is proclaimed. As I said, the fact that any of us are here, the fact that any of us believe, we don't always sense it, we don't always see it, but the Spirit has been at work in our lives. When Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit into those ten disciples, restores their breath, resuscitates them to new life, it then leads them to something else. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now we can hear this in a couple of ways. We can hear these words in a legalistic sort of way. But we can also hear them in a more life-giving way. This is one of the places in the Bible that we say Jesus gives us, his church, the ability to declare people's sins forgiven. And on the flip side, he gives us the ability to declare people's sins not forgiven. And that's true. In the church, the technical term for this is the office of the keys. Sometimes you'll see artwork in churches with two keys, like on the cover of your bulletin today, that artwork. Two keys. The one key represents declaring that God forgives us as we repent of our sins. The other represents declaring that God does not forgive those who do not repent of their sin. This is all true. It's not a comfortable thing for us to do, but if someone is doing something really wrong and thinks that's just okay, we say with love and compassion, no. It's really not. But it doesn't end there. When you look at this chapter as a whole, the focus is not so much on keeping a balanced sheet of people's sins and wrongdoings. It's not about receiving some sort of power trip to declare God's forgiveness and withhold it whenever we want. Because the motivation is the breath, God's spirit, the love of God, love that comes from God. Jesus gave rescue breathing to those disciples, and then Jesus calls them to carry that same life-giving breath to the rest of the world. And if they don't, then other people will not know of their need for Jesus, and they won't receive the rescue breathing he provides. When we look at others around us, we're not called to compare ourselves in terms of our righteousness. We are called to see that others who have the wind knocked out of them have the same need for God's breath as we do, so that they might also breathe deeply of God's love and redemption. So we can say, your your forgiveness is withheld, your sin remains, but that's not where it's supposed to end, because that's supposed to lead into being able to say, yes, your sin is forgiven, as the Holy Spirit calls you and gathers you. God has a purpose for not only our lives as individuals, but for his people. And God has a love for the world that first began to go out on Pentecost so long ago. And the Holy Spirit, the life-giving breath of God, is still among us where the word of Jesus is proclaimed, not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord in Zechariah, as we have received rescue breathing from Jesus. God uses us to speak that same word. And that's what being a congregation of God's people is about. If we think about our purpose, if we think about a mission statement, that's really what it all flows from. May it be so among us. Amen.
Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, when you filled the disciples with the Holy Spirit, souls were called, gathered, enlightened, and sanctified. Likewise, fill our congregation and the whole Christian church on earth with the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, you delivered your word through Moses and the prophets and fulfilled your word in Christ. He was planted in death for our sins and raised for our justification. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Almighty God, you have promised that all who drink your living water will, will, your living water will well up to eternal life. Help us show forth in holy lives the fruits of the Spirit and live with love toward our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, we give thanks for those who have served our nation through military service and service at home. We remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us and the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liberty responsibly. Keep safe all who travel. Bless our nation and help us to protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow us. Looking always to you. Let us look to those who are persecuted or are under attack from foreign entities. Lord, in your mercy. Light of this dark world. You have sent your Holy Spirit to your church as the comforter. Soothe the wounds of your people. According to your will, bring restoration to broken families. Heal the sick. Uplift the depressed. Provide for the poor. Uphold the forgotten and answer the prayers of all who call out to you. Especially this day, we lift up to you the families of Dean Boyer, Betty Shell, Roger Maddox, Dr. Mark Stewart, Patty Scott, and Steve Large. We pray for Barb Holbrook, Donna Weingartner, Shirley Smith and Greg Thomas, for Martha Lutz, Dave Schreider and Ron Perrin, 
for Crystal, Bob Tolliver for Bernard, for Julie's mom, for Keith, for Bob Little, for Kristen and Scott, and for Tia Benton, and all others we now name before you. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, giver of the Holy Spirit, clear away all distractions that our hearts and minds may be focused on you. As Christ comes to us in the bread which is his body and the cup of his blood, help us to receive your gifts with faith and to live and to live from them. Receive our praise and thanksgiving as tokens of our trust in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's be with you.
merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who rose beyond the bounds of death, and on this day as he had promised, poured out your spirit of life and power upon the chosen disciples. At this the whole earth exalts in boundless joy, and so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover lamb, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. With this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.